So today we're going to start off by talking about one-dimensional kinematics, which if you remember means that it's only along one line. It's purely right and left or purely up and down. Position is a vector quantity. This means that direction matters. When we start at one position and end at another, we have an arrow to indicate which direction we were traveling or the positive direction. Distance is the total length that you've traveled. The, things like the odometer in a car or a step tracker on your watch measure the total distance traveled. Now, this means that distance is a scalar quantity. It is never negative. It's either zero or positive. This is different from displacement, which is the change in position. Displacement is a vector, which means that direction is important. Five meters to the left is not the same as five meters to the right. Displacement we describe mathematically by saying delta x, or the change in x displacement, is equal to xf minus xi, your final position minus your initial position. So in two dimensions, we sometimes like to look at how this can be graphed. So we start with delta r, which is our two-dimensional displacement vector. So we have our graph here, we have our initial point and our initial position vector our final position and our final position vector. Our displacement vector starts from the initial position and points to the final position. So now that we know how to describe where something is, we can describe how fast it's moving. Average speed is the distance traveled divided by the total time that it took. So because it is distance and not displacement, Average speed is a scalar. And if we look at our formula, we have distance in the numerator, so meters in the numerator, divided by time in the denominator, so seconds in the denominator. That means that our SI unit is meters divided by second, or the meter per second. Average velocity is different from average speed. Speed is a scalar, but velocity is a vector. And it tells us how fast something moves in the direction that it is going. So average speed was distance over time, average velocity is displacement over time. And we represent that by saying delta x over delta t. And you'll notice that it has the same SI unit as average speed, the meter per second. Now, we know that velocity tells us how fast position changes with time, but acceleration tells us how fast velocity changes with time. And since these two definitions are really similar, our formula for average acceleration will look really similar to our formula for average velocity. If average velocity is change in position over time, average acceleration is change in velocity over time. So we have the final velocity minus initial velocity over the amount of time that it took. And since in the numerator, we have the meter per second, and then the denominator, we have the second, we divide by seconds again, and we get the meter per second per second or meter per second squared. So now we want to start to look at motion with constant acceleration. We actually have some kinematic equations that we use to describe this. So for those of us playing the calculus game, position, velocity, and acceleration all have a derivative antiderivative relationship. So that means that if acceleration is constant, and only if it is constant, we can find some simple relationships linking position, velocity, and acceleration together. So these are those three equations that we're going to describe a little bit more before we turn you loose on them. So this is that first equation. We know that T stands for time and A stands for acceleration. Those are pretty simple. But this V with a subscript zero, we call V naught. And that means that it's the initial velocity. Some places also like to use an I for the subscript for initial velocity, or some places will start to number the velocities in order. So initial would be V1. And this V as a function of T means that we're plugging in our time, however long it took, and we get that velocity. Sometimes we also describe it as the final velocity, Vf. Our other equations, they all use the same variables, but they add some. So here we see very similarly the initial position x naught and our final position x as a function of t or xf. And we have our third and final equation, which uses all variables which we have already talked about. So now in class, 
you're going to work on examples applying these constant acceleration equations.